Kevin with Prococa Chiropractic and Rehabilitation. And today I wanted to differentiate the different types of disc herniations. And so first off, with a normal disc, the blue is a nucleus propulsus. It is a very gelatinous jelly donut like material that is anti-compressive. And the black here is the annulus fibrosis is a, a bunch of ligaments that surround it that prevent the jelly donut from going anywhere. And so if we look at our first stage, a disc prolapse or protrusion, a part of the nucleus propulsus or disc material it starts to bulge or herniate into the annulus. The annulus is wickered down a bit, but it hasn't breached it. Um, the next stage here is the disc extrusion, where the nucleus propulsus material actually does breach the annulus and kind of herniates through. And the final stage here is a, a disc sequestration, where you have the nucleus propulsus material herniates, uh, breaches the annulus, herniates through, and it actually has a few pieces kind of break off. And again, I just want to do a quick video to demonstrate because this is going to preface a follow-up of how, how we treat and how these hey, recover. I'm Dr. Kevin with Prococo Chiropractic and Rehabilitation. And today, I wanted to talk about a cool systematic review that was published in 2015 that discusses the spontaneous progression of lumbar disc herniations. And in my last video, I had talked about the difference between the different types of, of disc herniations, chiefly disc sequestrations, extrusions, uh, protrusion or prolapse, and then just a normal disc. This is most clinically advanced, typically, and this is generally, you know, not. So what this study documented was how these types of disc herniations responded to conservative management and essentially time. And so in, in this case, conservative, uh, conservative management included exercise, physical therapy, injections, um, bed rests, or NSAIDs, things to that effect, but it did not include any form of surgical intervention. And so when we look at generally what is considered the most clinically advanced was the disc sequestration. 96% of these spontaneously regressed. And as we hop to a disc extrusion, that 70% of these spontaneously regressed. And a prolapse slash protrusion, about 41% of them had regressed. When I use the term spontaneous regression, you know, what exactly do I mean by that? And so what that means is that the actual physical size of the herniation gets smaller. And so the study demonstrated that over time, that yeah, that was very much characteristic of, of what happened, that the, the herniation size did get smaller. The most clinically advanced, and also even say the, the, those that are maybe not as clinically advanced, they all got well, smaller. Well, that sounds cool and hip. However, the last thing that this article discussed, which is kind of like the looming Velociraptor about to hop on me, is that a positive clinical outcome cannot be predicted and is not correlated with the regression rate or a percentage of the disc. And I'm gonna repeat that. A positive outcome, a positive clinical outcome, cannot be predicted by the rate of regression of disc herniation. Don't get me wrong. You can absolutely have a positive outcome and it can be associated with disc re regression. However, what the article is discussing is that there's a poor association between you know, what the anatomy looks like and your clinical outcome. I'll that right there just do. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or even you'd like to run something past me that a prior provider has told you, I'd love to chat with you further. And don't be afraid to share a video. If it's news to yourself, it's often news to somebody else.